from the government because we are a constitutional republic. I mean, just look at the word in republic. Public. Public. Right? Which means that the public has some say so. Do you know that you could go in the Alexis Nexus and they can find out what you've been doing since you were 16 years old? We want to go in, we want to shut them down. We're going to go to Alexis Nexus website and go in to opt out. You got opt in, you're already opt in more than likely. So when you opt out, now they're going to send you a letter in the mail saying you've opt out. Now they have blocked everything nobody can see because you are opt out. What they do is they say they check with the original creditor. Most of the time they don't check the original creditor because there's so much information that has to be held until they use other companies to hold that in their databases. So they go in and you shut them down. Now they cannot go, they cannot move forward. So when you shut them down, now they're gonna send you a letter in the mail. When they send you a letter in the mail, you better not lose that letter. You're gonna need those numbers in order to opt back in. If you don't have those numbers, now you're trying to go fund and you gotta opt back in, guess what? You don't have the numbers. It's gonna be very difficult to get that opt back in. Opt in, opt out? Why would you wanna opt out if you gonna wanna opt back in later? You might as well stay opt in because it ain't nothing they don't know about you anyway. And opting out of Alexis Nexus ain't going to change the fact that everybody else and every other platform know everything about you, too. A younger sister from Canada, she goes to uh, every now and then Kamala and her husband call her and she goes to visit them. She stays with them for four or five days and cooks good South Indian food for them for four or five days and comes back. Ma'am, uh, so like uh, looking ahead, Kamala Harris has also said that uh, I'm a black woman who's got into uh, the vice president post, but I will not be the last. And uh, many are also saying that uh, she will be the future president in 2024. Your take on that? I don't know. I have no comment. That speaks volumes. Because why won't she speak about her niece being so-called black? That's because she's Indian. Come on now. Who were really the powerful people? Was it the director of CIA? Was it FBI? Was it the big pharma? Was it military industrial complex guys that are general dynamics? Yeah. Who were the people that are like, it. oh, I got you. You have, I, I never it. thought you had power. Who actually has the power? The most powerful person by far, the president. Power over everybody. Power, the power is enormous. Most people don't believe that. It, I think Trump is saying that because third presidents get in the seat and then they allow the people around them to control everything that they do instead of actually taking charge like they're supposed to. It, it is, but there is a sort of a deep state and a lot of that's people that have been there. And then there's some bad guys, there's some bad people. Then there's a radical left, which I think are more dangerous in many ways than mm -hmm. the other countries, mm -hmm. I really do. You know, uh, guys like Shifty Adam Schiff and other people, they're bad people. They're sort of sick people, not stupid people either, by the way. You know, what I'm saying is who is their boss? Who, th who calls them and say, you better I, or else? I think it's an amorphous group. It's it's a group. It's not one person. It's an amorphous group of lunatics. But yeah, see, Trump is speaking as far as like, there is no one person. Let's think about it. Like, you think it, it could be one person that could control all of these politicians or leaders and make them be so evil? No, this is a collective group. It could be the AI Pact or the APEC or whatever you want to call it. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, represents a concerning example of how intense lobbying can distort the political process in the United States. Starting as a small advocacy group aimed at bolstering US-Israel relations, AI Pact has grown into a colossal force, wielding disproportionate influence over US foreign policy particularly towards Israel and the Middle East. AIPAC's expansion and influence raise questions about the balance of power in US politics. Its fundraising prowess, backed by a substantial membership base, has enabled it to exert considerable sway over lawmakers and policy decisions. This influence is not without controversy. AIPAC's lobbying efforts, often seen as overly aggressive, have been met with scrutiny for their potential to skew bipartisan policymaking in favor of a singular foreign policy agenda. The organization's role in significant policy decisions, such as the US Embassy move to Jerusalem, is emblematic of its outsized influence. AIPAC's activities go beyond advocacy, bordering on coercion, and contribute to a lopsided US foreign policy 
that often neglects the complexities of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and broader Middle Eastern dynamics. AIPAC's approach has sparked debates about the ethics of lobbying in shaping national policy. Let's talk about AIPAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee. It was incorporated in 1963. For 10 years prior to that, it was known as the American Zionist Committee for Public Affairs. AIPAC calls itself America's pro-Israel lobby, and according to its website, it has over 3 million members across the country in regional chapters working to, quote, expand and strengthen the U.S.-Israel relationship, end quote. You may know AIPAC as being one of the biggest and most recognizable donors to many of the members of Congress in your state. But contributing to campaigns is a relatively new fun. Peep that. The donors, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you got your hand in somebody's pocket. You can pretty much make them do whatever you want them to do. Of the organization. Before 2021, AIPAC did not endorse candidates nor give political contributions. Its focus was on lobbying elected officials, not actually electing officials. But in a dramatic shift in policy, AIPAC began directly funding candidates and spending big on races in 2021. AIPAC Political Action Committee, AIPAC PAC, filed something called a Statement of Organization with the FEC just in time for the 2022 election cycle where it spent $50 million, including both direct contributions to candidates and outside spending like TV advertisements. According to APEC, it donated money to 365 candidates from both parties, including every single member of both Democratic and Republican leadership in Congress. 109 Republicans who voted against the certification of the 2020 presidential election in America received campaign contributions from AIPAC. Mm. All in all, AIPAC gave money to 342 members of the 118th Congress. The 2022 elections were the most expensive midterms in American history with a total cost of $8.9 billion spent. Now, last year, AIPAC ranked 15th in total expenditure by a political action committee, according to data collected by Open Secrets. But take a look at the other funders that APAC is competing against for that title. Act Blue and Win Red, they are Democratic and Republican Party machines. Save America is Donald Trump's uh, money raising operation. The Conservative Club for Growth, Emily's List, focuses on electing Democratic women to office. All of the pa oh. the Conservative is Donald Trump's uh I gotta go back y'all because they said something about Donald Trump and I gotta make sure I'm hearing this correctly committee according to data collected by open secrets but take a look at the other funders that APAC is competing against for that title act blue and win red they are Democratic and Republican Party machines save America is Donald Trump's uh money raising operation the well it's safe to say that he ain't a part of that remember that he more what well, he said emorgus group emorgus group of people he's not gonna say the name come on now rid of club for growth emily's list focuses on electing democratic women to office all of the packs on this list are massively domestic focused ideological machines apac is the only organization in the top 20 whose interests are focused entirely on america's relationship to a foreign government now let's take a look at who benefits from apac's largesse here are the top 20 recipients in Congress, the House and the Senate, of APEC money in the 2022 midterm cycle, according to Open Secrets. They're members of both parties. They come from every corner of the country with varying levels of experience in Congress. The Democrat Glenn Ivey of Maryland tops the list. He beat out fellow Democrat Donna Edwards in Maryland's House primary after APEC poured millions into pro-Ivey advertisements and mailers. Edwards was running for a second stint in Congress after serving during the Obama administration, where she voted present, not even a no, on a number of pro-Israel resolutions. So the money poured in against her. Not even an endorsement from Nancy Pelosi could save her. AIPAC's influence, often attributed to its financial contributions and lobbying, raises concerns about the extent and nature of such influence in politics. The organization's practice of organizing trips to Israel for U.S. lawmakers, this practice epitomizes the fine line APAC walks between informing and influencing policymakers. A growing partisan divide in U.S. politics further complicates APAC's role. Republican support remains strong, 
while an increasing number of Democrats express reservations. Within the American Jewish community, AIPAC's policies face criticism, highlighting diverse opinions on US-Israel relations. AIPAC has evolved, expanding its support base and adapting strategies to navigate the changing political scene. Its efforts, particularly regarding coordination with the Israeli government and indirect political fundraising, spark legal and ethical questions. Undeniably, AIPAC has impacted US foreign policy, notably in decisions like the US Embassy's relocation to Jerusalem and opposition to the Iran nuclear deal. Sounds kind of familiar, right? And for those who know, you, if you know, you know. Let me just say this. Sounds like what the liberals are doing with Ukraine. That dot right there is GPT-4, the current brain of ChatGPT, the one that's giving everybody all these worries about how it's going to take over the economy. That dot is GPT-5. According to the rumor mill of current and former OpenAI employees, GPT-5 has already finished training, and they're currently doing safety tests. Like GPT-4.0, it is an omni model, meaning that it can do text to image, image to text, text to audio, audio to video, all of that. By this point, you should have heard of Sora, the video generator model from OpenAI that was used by Ted the Ted, of TED Talks. Uh, to create some amazing visuals. Let me show you right now. You might think some of this is drone footage or maybe CGI models. No, this is Sora. This is a video generator model that makes things completely from scratch. Nothing in this video is real. You may already be thinking about some of the staggering implications of this technology. It's literally just text to photorealistic video. But what about image to photorealistic video? Grok2 from Elon Musk can produce images like these. You may be able to tell that's AI, but can your grandma? For how much longer? These things are getting better every single day. And um, which one of you votes? Now this is what people should be worried about. Everybody's talking about Elon Musk and his robots. Even he says something about how fast it's growing and how it could take over the economy. So that ought to tell you something. And let me put some things in perspective because a lot of people are going to say, Elon Musk owns it. No, he does not. But your boy Billy G, Billy Gates, he's invested over $14 billion in it. And we already know what his history is. <laughs> I still don't understand how that works. Somebody get in the comments and let me know because if they still in 2017 and we in 2024, uh, I want to go over there. We need a reset. A doomsday earthquake is coming to the United States any day now, and there will be catastrophic damage in our color shaded regions above me here. So if you're in these areas, you could even see the United States completely split in half any day now by a major earthquake. All right, guys, come on. We've been hearing this type of misinformation floating around TikTok for days now. And you know Rush Weather had to get on here and bring you all the truth. Now, the only truth that you need to know is that we have no accurate way under modern science and technology to accurately predict or forecast earthquakes. We just don't know. We can take historical data and we can look at future probabilities and say maybe within this date range we could see something occur again. But again, we just don't know. And if that doesn't verify within the next 50 years, you're going to say, oh, in the next 50 years. Or they'll just go as simple as any day now we could see something occur. And so with that being said, you got to be really careful where you're getting your information from. Is this a seismic active zone? Yes, it's one of the most active seismic zones east of the Rocky Mountains, and something like this could occur. Now, will we see the U.S. split in half? A very unlikely scenario. But could we see a similar situation to 200 years ago, between 1811 and 1812, where a 7.0 greater magnitude earthquake did cause the reversal flow of the Mississippi, which caused widespread damage? Yeah, we could see something like that occur again, but do we know when it's going to happen? No. So you guys got to make sure you're getting your information from a trusted source such as Rush Weather. So if you haven't already, please consider following for more accurate weather updates and to be notified when I go live to cover severe weather outbreaks and events. Again, guys, make sure you tr get trusted information here on social media and I'll catch you all on the next one. They would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade and they did as he intended.
Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. Now, if y'all really listen to it, this is the this is the rally that everybody was talking about when the person said Jesus is Lord, and she said, "Oh, I think you're at the wrong rally." To give her the benefit of the doubt, there were actually people shouting, "That's a lie! That's a lie!" Right along with Jesus is Lord. So we don't know for sure which one she was answering to. We don't know if she was for sure answering to the Jesus is Lord one. Yeah, she's kind of evil there. Let's just, we just going to say that. But I like to give people the benefit of the doubt because I don't hate the lady. I don't even know her to hate her. I just don't agree with nothing she says. Hey, wait, wait a minute here. The vice president once upon a time supported taxpayer dollars, your money, my money, your money, all the people who are watching, to go towards people who broke the law coming into our country to give them driver's license, to pay for tuition, when we're struggling to pay for our own children to get a college education, then her own running mate signed into law in his own state these very things that she's now saying she's now against. And, and, and American people are supposed to believe that the vice president has now all of a sudden had an epiphany. And all of a sudden, all of her beliefs have magically changed, yet the guy she chose clearly believes these things. And, and you're flipping it to Republicans? Oh, that's gone. And I'm, I'm you know, I'd like to believe that at some point you have to stop pretending that you, yeah, you're right. Maybe we're not just as strong, you mean? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think, I think I'm going to see next week. So, I mean, I have, we have time, but I'm, I'm going in and out of places, but not everyone has time. So that is a video of former president. Damn, is, is Barack Obama sick? Not everyone has time. Time. That's true, but I'm going in and out at places. Going in and out of what? Consciousness? Obama talking to President Biden at Ethel Kennedy's funeral. It has over 6 million views already. There's a lot of requests for lip readers. If you're new here, I'm Nina. I'm a lip reader. Please don't take this lip read for 100% truth. There's no way for me to know 100% that that is truthfully what's being said. Therefore, this is alleged. I'm gonna be so honest with you guys. I got a little nervous when I was lip reading that video because I started worrying, what if they're talking about Obama's health? They could be talking about the election, but for me, it made sense. The context, they're at a funeral, they're getting older. Uh, I'm gonna cry. I don't know what it is about just getting older, the, the mortality of it all, and like, just you can't do anything about it. Literally makes me cry thinking about my parents getting older. I don't know, I could be so wrong. What do you guys think? Yeah, it sounded like they were talking about somebody being sick or him being sick, because he was like, I'm going in and out at places. I don't know. What y'all think, man? People, I probably shouldn't be enjoying this as much as I am, but I can't help myself. I really can't. <sighs> well, there's drama in Kamala's camp. Oh yeah, she is pissed at her campaign manager, Julie Chavez, because she advised her to skip the Al Smith dinner send in a poorly received video because she didn't want to alienate her LGBTQ or pro-abortion voters by seeming like, you know, she's, you know, cozying up to the Catholics. <laughs> well, Kamala was pissed, pissed, cussing her out, cussed the girl out, brought the girl to tears, calling her all kind of names, saying that she an F, that she fucking stupid, that she's fucking horrible at her job. I mean, going off on the poor girl. I don't know if I was, I wouldn't take it. Cause I already know girl, you shouldn't even be in that spot anyway. You was selected, not elected. It won't be, Kamala said that Chavez will be the reason why Kamala loses the election. No honey, mm -mm. because you were selected and not elected and you shouldn't be in that spot anyway. <laughs> Shouldn't be there, honey. That's why you're going to lose. Because your whole, the whole way that you even came to be, the coup, all of it, what, everything that y'all did, <laughs> there is no way that my God is going to let y'all be in power. So I look at this as some sweet justice from the Lord up above. I really, truly do. I'm so glad that her entire campaign, all of it, is falling apart. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus. Okay, guys, 
walking outside to take the trash out would blow your mind if you saw this. Why is there a giant just walking around in the middle of the night? Why is he there? He, she, do you see it? I know I ain't tripping, but what would you do? You walk outside to take your trash out and you see this just, you know, roaming around night at night. What you think? Let me know. That old tree just need a good pruning. That's it. Good old pruning. Take me to 2035. Um, I think it's hard to say where all this can go without sounding like a crazy person. Um, go I, ahead, I, I really me. believe the technology yeah. is going to be that powerful. I hope that in 10 years, we are, all of us, we are limited by what we can imagine. Do you think it's moving too fast? My current belief is no, but I could imagine things that would change that quickly. And I would say, okay, this is moving too fast. Like what? What would change that? If we made an AI system that was better at doing AI research than all of OpenAI, and you could push a button and just say, improve really fast. That's an example of something I think would be moving too fast. When I sit with you, you're so calm, you're so relatable. It seems like everything's okay. Is that how you really feel? I don't want to give a false sense of security here. The bottom line for, I think, most people is whether or not you can trust the people who are in charge. And I know you went through a phase where your own board said, we don't trust you. And then you got yourself another board. How do we know we can trust you? So the bar on this is clearly extremely high. It is clear that this is going to be a very impactful technology. And I think a lot of scrutiny is thus super warranted. I actually saw a headline that said you were the most powerful and perhaps most dangerous man on the planet. And I'm wondering how that sits with you. I, it's, it's definitely strange to hear you say that. Now, this is the guy you need to be worried about. Let me tell you, it's like another um, Mark Zuckerberg situation, right? created Facebook, people invested billions into, into it and made him super rich. And now it's out of his control. You remember those interviews where he was worried about people finding out that uh, Facebook could be used to invade your privacy, right? It's kind of the same thing with him. Yeah, these people didn't invest all this money into it because it's like, one of the greatest inventions to ever happen, right? It's kind of like in my last video where I was talking about somebody creates something and then the villain comes in and says, ha ha, we can use this to take over the world, <laughs> right? This is the same situation. And you look at him, he's not even sure how bad this could get, but he's worried that it could very well get bad. This is who you need to be worried about, not Elon Musk. And let's just say, that Elon, Elon Musk, he rep robots turn bad, right? Let's, let's just say this happens. It wouldn't be because of him. It would be because AI is so powerful that it can somehow connect to the robots and control them. I'm just saying, think about it. You'll see all these two, three, four hundred thousand dollar houses. Now here's one, there's one. All right, I want to show you what these son bitches are made out of. See that? Look at that shit. Hold on, it gets better. Okay. Now, behind all those bricks, right there, there's this. Ain't shit to it. Y'all want y'all's goddamn homes built out of fucking cardboard? 200 G's. 200 G's. Yeah. I've heard the old talk about these new houses not being worth a damn dime. And I can believe it. That's why I want my, the goal is to get some land and build my house from, from the ground up. So I know it's built right and built to last. I actually owe you an apology before we start. I've been very critical about you, how you fight all, all through the campaigns. I <laughs> voted for you because I like policy. I didn't know you as a man. And I think when you don't understand what a man fights for, you can get lost, especially with all the noise we're seeing from fake news, etc. Who created these pictures from you? So, Guffdale show's over. 
cameras are off. We go backstage and I expected you to be like every politician or anybody I've ever bought, celebrity I've bodyguarded for. And you met my family and you talked to my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter is 10 years old, name is Georgie. You guys talked for 20 minutes. If I didn't, if nobody knew, you could have been her grandfather. And you were talking about her horses and her dreams. And I was sitting there and I was like, I have been so wrong about this man because I never understood why you fight the way you fight. You're a family man. You're a father. And your daughter's a gorgeous, uh, really, and your wife, the whole thing. I mean, you have got some setup. I'll tell you. <laughs> I actually owe you an apology before. Check out this commercial that Damar Hamlin just put out. And it is always truth in plain sight with these people. So you're probably wondering why I have this lab coat on. Well, you see? I trained very hard all year, and my recovery is extremely important to me. The problem is, I haven't been able to find a clean, healthy protein drink that tastes great and gives you the perfect amount of protein and vitamins with none of the bad stuff. So with my friends at Don't Quit, I decided to create my own signature protein shake. Cookies and cream. I feel real good about this one. So as you see, he had to show the number 33, 33 grams of protein. He could have picked any other number, but chose to flash the number 33. This is more truth in plain sight because these people always have to show you what they are about. They always have to show their signs and their symbols over and over and over again because this is all repetitive and TikTok this is for entertainment purposes only. But what do you think about this? Y'all remember when they said that he died on the field, right? And he came back as a whole nother person. It's not really who he is. This this isn't him. Now they're saying this. I look, I digress. Donald Trump is an unserious man. Oh. Ready? These prosecutions were all started by her what and Biden against their political opponents. You see, this is how he is winning because he's sitting back and looking at all of the negative things that they're saying about him. And they said, we're going to counter this with this because they're making this stuff up. And we're going to show proof that they're making this stuff up. He's studying his opponent. He's a mastermind at this stuff, man. Come on now. Get that out right away. Now. She paid bail for rioters in the Minnesota Freedom Fund. She paid and raised bail. She paid bail to get the violent yeah. rioters in Minnesota out of jail. Lying about the Project 2025. Oh, lying against Project 25. I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Thank you. Look at oh, that. Mr. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you're not ordinary. I mean, thank you so you much. You are not ordinary. I can see. We pray for you. Uh, and you are the type of person we want to be the president. Thank you, thank you so much. So nice. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I took a bullet. That's right. Thank you, Mr. President. When you think about it, I guess that's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. See, stuff like that make you smile, don't it? Just make you smile from ear to ear. I like it. I love it, actually. I'm going to be honest with you because everybody's noticing it. Every single political commentator in America Every single one of them knows this, that if you do not step out and say things that are radically pro-Israel, or if you are too quiet on certain narratives and they want you to be radically pro-Israel, you can lose everything. That's truth. That is a fact. I'm not, I'm not feeling like I need to hide from that anymore because, or be afraid to say it rather is a better way to say it, because I've endured this for years. I'm just at the end of my rope. I, I have given so much rope here and I am just done with it. She's telling the truth and that's why I don't speak on those type of things on this channel. But I don't know what the consequences would be and I don't want to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not even going to believe me. It is now official. Kamala faked the photo in her autobiography when she said, this is my grandma Beryl. She lied. Grandma Beryl was in fact a white Irish woman who owned a store on the island and she used a fake photo 
a, a real photo, a photo of an actual woman that was not her grandmother. We know this now officially because a Jamaican woman who was friends with her grandma Beryl has stepped forward and confirmed that the photo is not Beryl and that Beryl was white. This is unbelievable. I deserve a Pulitzer. I absolutely deserve a Pulitzer. We're gonna show you what that woman said on the show today. And I know for a fact she is telling the truth because she gave a detail that I did not give the public that I knew about Kamala's family. So just ready your engines, you guys. We're gonna see you in a couple of hours. Here's the link. They gonna quit playing with Candace because she is the truth. And when it comes to investigative journalists, she got it, man. She got it. You can hate her all you want, but she gonna find out the truth. Today's Kamala's birthday. She's turning... It's Kamala's birthday? She's turning She's 60, 60 years old. Do you wanna say it? Yes, I would say happy birthday, Kamala. She's turning 60. Did you get her some fries? I think I'll get her some flowers. Why not to beat her? Maybe again? I'll get her some fries. You're right. That might be. I'll give her, give her some McDonald's. I'll get her a McDonald's hamburger. Thank you. No, it is her birthday. Why it is true, right? I, yes. I yes. Saw Happy it. birthday, Kamala. Happy birthday. Why See you later. Bye. And it's crazy because they still going to throw and slide him under the bus even though he wished her a happy birthday. Can she do the same? You should have no income tax, no federal income tax, no state income tax, no tax on tips. You should be able to make a transaction without the government getting involved five times, reaching into your pocket and shaking you down like the mafia that it is. So if we need tax for certain things in civilization, we can have a small sales tax and that would be more than enough to still pay for the roads, the police officers and everything else. It would be more than enough. Yeah, we might not be able to afford all the wars overseas. Yeah, we might not be able to give you credit. 200 billion dollars and israel 10 billion dollars every time they come to washington but who wants to do that anyway you see yeah we might not be able to afford that oh well i think the american people will be able to get over that quite frankly so no i don't think it goes far enough and this whole concept that i always hear these talking points from the left oh the rich don't pay their fair share well what is the fair share what is the fair share from the rich they already pay the most in taxes by far the rich pay 90% of the taxes, but this is still solved with a flat sales tax because who's gonna be, who's gonna be taxed more on a flat sales tax? The rich. Who's gonna be buying a yacht? The rich. Who's gonna be buying a skyscraper? The rich. Who's gonna be buying a jet? The rich. So it really knocks out all the problems. It takes care of the left wanting the rich to pay more taxes because they buy more things, spend more money, and it gets the government out of the middleman and the middle class and the lower classes' lives where we're not spending as much on taxes either. So it's a nice policy to get a talking point started. It's a nice policy that could end up determining the results of this election. But this is beyond party lines. We are taxed way too much. We need to cut taxes down to almost nothing. And by the way, for all these people that want more government services and all this thing, why don't they just volunteer to pay more taxes? Spoke a whole lot of facts there. I've said this in, in, in one of my videos in the past. Yeah, taxes shouldn't even exist at all. It would solve a whole bunch of problems with one sale tax. That's it. That's all we need. Are we a republic or a democracy? Democracy. Mm. Do you recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. To the what? In the Pledge of Allegiance, it tells you what America is. Okay. And to the republic for, for which, which it stands. stands. So we're not a democracy. We're a democracy, I, right? No, 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 no. So yeah. we democratically elect our officials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are a constitutional republic. So we're a constitutional republic, meaning that we have elected officials that we elect that go represent us. Right? A democracy means majority rules. So we don't want a democracy truly, because you can't trust everybody's opinion. Yeah. Right? So instead of the government ransacking us. Now we get to be protected from the government because we are a constitutional republic. I mean, just look at the word in republic. Public. Public, right? Which means that the public has some say so. As a democracy, you don't. They tell you when to eat, sleep, shit, and fart. I don't want nobody telling me when to do that no more. They say if Kamala wins, then the whole country will be like Detroit. <laughs> Detroit, resilient like Detroit. High crime like Detroit, poverty mm. like Detroit, mm. unemployment like Detroit. Nobody wants to live there like Detroit. Are, are we talking about the same Detroit Lizzo? I might actually agree with you for once, but I have a question. Is this endorsing Kamala or is this an advertisement for Trump? Well, you heard it here first, y'all. If you want the country to look like Detroit, you know who to vote for. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. 
Oh my god, did I catch that on camera? No, I saw that. I know. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh shit. Whether you think it's just nature's artwork or something otherworldly, this bizarre tree has everyone buzzing. Real or imagined, there's no doubt it's made for one spooky adventure. What do you think? Is it just a tree or something more? What is that? What is it? Oh. Curious about the mysterious shapes lurking in the trees? This video has gone viral with everyone guessing what's hidden up there. Is that a bear? moving yeah this just really doesn't feel right so what are we looking at here a shadow an animal or just a natural growth a tree tumor i'm glad i had a dad that took me in the woods and raised me to you know be in tune with nature because when I see videos like this, I be like, it's got to be made from city people. It got to be, because that is literally a tree tumor. Yeah, they are shaped weird. And if you catch them at the right time, and it's dark enough, and that shadow hits right, it might look like there's something up there holding the tree. Viewers think it's a huge burl, a tree growth worth quite a bit to woodworkers, while others swear it looks like a creature watching from the branches. Whether it's a creepy fungus, a rare tree disease, or just a trick of the eye, this tree has everyone captivated. Well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. It's sad. you seen that video where the kid didn't even know that we were re a republic, right? And you could, but he could recite the, the Pledge of Allegiance. And these people are able to vote. And that's the sad part. Nobody should be able to vote unless they have common common knowledge of what politics are and what the country is, what it stands for. And I think that should be a law that would eliminate a whole lot of this confusion. This would force people to learn and educate themselves on their country politically. This is not taking anything away from anybody, but this is going to force you to learn. And this way, elections can go f smoother in the future. And there won't be people turning against people because they they vote for a different color. But you never know what you're going to get because everybody gets dumber and dumber by the day thinking that they can just say, oh, well, he's black or she's black, so I'm voting for them. Or he's a white guy and he stands up for the white people. I'm going to vote for him. That is the dumbest thing you can do. And this is why we have so many issues as a people now. So what are we gonna do about it? I think it should call for people having some sort of education about these things before they're able to vote. It shouldn't be just based on age. You should have to go take a test and get certified to be a vo voter. I think, this is just me now. And I think it should be readily available to everyone, to every Amer American for free but you should have the choice to want to go and learn this. This is just me though. I don't know, man. I could rant all day, but I won't. Tell me what y'all think about that. Y'all think that people should educate themselves or be forced to educate themselves before they're able to vote? I mean, I think the limit should still be like 18 when you can go take the test and be able to vote, but not just anybody should be able to just walk in there and vote. That is some of the most idiotic stuff. I shouldn't have been able to vote for, for Obama when I did because I was ignorant. I voted ignorantly. But y'all get in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this. I could rant all day, but I won't. And with that being said, like I always say, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description and follow all my social medias. And remember, balance the argument and not the person. And if you want to see more dope videos, click on the video right here.